Hello guys, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be going over some more jump wind paints, and this time we're going to be going over their glaze. Um, I thought I had them all. I'm missing number five, but I went to several sources. There is no number five. I don't know if they uh, reserved the number for an upcoming color, or I just had trouble and they never shipped it. It's one or the other, but it's not out there. This is every one you can possibly get at the moment here in the U.S. Um, we have pearl red, pearl yellow, there we go, pearl blue, oh nice, pearl green, pearl magenta, pearl turquoise, pearl white, Right through my fingers. A pearl black. Oh, look at that. Pearl silver. Oh, looks like the white. Pearl moon white. Not sure what the difference is there. Pearl midnight black. Oh, that's a nice color. All right. Uh, these are a lacquer. Uh, they're fairly thick. We're going to have to steer them up. I'll show you that. We're going to mix them just like the other jump wind paints I tested. I'll show you how to uh, mix them up before we spray them. I'm going to spray them all using this Grex 0.3 millimeter needle. Great airbrush. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank you guys for uh, making my panel liners, my neon panel liners, a success. Sold out first batch. The second batch is almost sold out. I think the green and the blue have gone already. The in fact, all three of these, the purple is gone too. So I'll be doing another restock. Hopefully by Tuesday uh, with the Gundam Pros guys. So uh, a restock is coming in. Now you see this jar here. Um, a few of you have gotten back to us that uh, some of these have leaked. And uh, the company told me they wouldn't leak. I like these jars quite a bit. But no matter what we've tried, they've leaked on some of you guys. Uh, I have a bunch here. I opened like 10 in a row. One, had a, one was seeping and leaking. The others weren't. So I guess it's a random thing. But I, I don't want it to be random at all. So... I asked them for other jars, and they told me they have these octagon, but they have this super seal. It takes like an extra tight hit, and it's got a rubber seal on top, and they told me these don't leak at all. And uh, so the next batch will be in these. You're actually going to get a little bit more in this. I think it's one and a half uh, ounces. These are one ounce, even though they kind of look the same. It's just a little taller. So uh, that's the story. The label happens to fit on the top, so we won't have to change the labels which I do like. This all will still have the ball bearing in them. You can see it right there. So uh, I've tested this. They sent me a short case of these. Um, I mean, they sent me a few out of a case to put water in. I, I actually put my paint in it, and I've been shaking it to see if it's uh, leaking, and it's not. So it looks like uh, these could be the one. So the next batch will be in these nice octagon shapes. I used to have a Tamaya paint. I mean, uh like one of their glues like this in the jar and uh, it came in an octagon it's their regular thick uh, glue so I have seen this octagon before uh, it's pretty nice it's what's inside that counts so that's what's coming up guys if you see the octagon oops in the next batch uh, that's why these uh, jars have been told by me they should be leak proof uh, we shall see now a few of you guys going on with the neons before we get started with the test um, some guys mentioned they want to paint the eyes and whatnot. Now, these are too thin. These are these have been thinned out to go through a panel line, a very fine line. You won't be able to brush it on. It'll just run to the edges. So uh, I, I didn't know if you guys realized, but in my regular Mecha Empire lineup, my enamels that are made for brushing and airbrushing, um, these also glow under um, the black light. And I painted this last night. I took his eyes. It was a green label. Can you see it? I hand painted it right there. So let me show you this quick before we get started with the test. Let me get the black light. Let me pause this. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. I darkened the light, the room quite a bit. The only light on is from the spray booth. Can you see that thing? That baby's bright, huh? Anyway, yeah, oh, look at that. See it? They glow. Ready? Check this out. Look at that. Look at his eyes. And that was brushed with this green right here. And they're the same names. I call them neon green. I think some have 
A couple of a, uh, chartreuse is right here. Vermilion is the red. Here's the orange. They're hard to see them. Well, you can see them glow from a distance. Anyway, but these are enamels. You can you can airbrush a big piece, or you can hand paint them. Now these are really really good. These enamels for hand hand painting, for brushing on. Look how great the eyes look lit up. So it actually looks like you got a LED in there. I'm trying to get it so you can see it just right. Look at that. It's a little bright in the room because I left those lights on. But you get the idea, right, guys? You can see it. I'm trying to move the black light around. <laughs> Look at that. Is that awesome? So, there you go. Look at that. So that's what you want to do, guys. Um, if you want to have the eyes light up or certain pieces, you know, that's not a panel line. You're going to have to grab these. Now, these, luckily, are also all in stock at Gundam Pros. Just type in Neon in the search engine, and you'll see all my paints. They're right below the uh, new panel liners. And that's what they look like. Mecha Empire enamels. All right. All right, guys, let me get the lights back on. I'll be right back. All right, we are back in all our bright glory here. Uh, one more quick thing with these. I'm testing this blue, and I'm going to paint a uh, UV reactive coating over it. Uh, I don't know if the guy wants to give me his name, but uh, send me an email. He called me today. Uh, local boy. Uh, we just missed each other at the local hobby shop, but I got a phone call from my buddy who owns, works at the hobby shop. And uh, I answered a few questions for him and involved Blue Neon. So uh, not to give your name out if you don't want me to, you know, I need your permission. Um, hit me up in an email. It's in the description below. And let me know, you know, who you were that we met. We, uh, you called me today. And uh, I'm going to work with you on this, and I'm going to show you the results. I'll work directly with you. He'll know what we're talking about. We're going to spray some pieces with this neon and then cover it with a UV reactive paint, which I have in stock. I think I have everything in stock at this point. And, uh, and that's it. All right, guys, I'll tell you about the future test coming up at the end of the video. I got a new airbrush in the mail today. I'm excited to show you guys. But first, let's go ahead and test these. Now, I, some of these I did off camera. These I decided I'm going to paint on camera. We're going to paint yellow, blue, green, and magenta. We're going to do these four on camera. We're going to spray over black. I painted some pieces black. See the red? Now I painted them with this Tamiya. I think it's 14. Yep, TS-14. The spray works great for a base for a lot of the stuff, even all clad, chromes. It's great. I bought a case of that, and it's good to have because when I got a big test and um, I got to get some stuff done quick, it's good to uh, just have a spray paint. I can paint a lot of pieces quickly, and you can see what I did here. See, these are red, and I just sprayed them all with that black. It goes on really nice, too. Look at it. So that's what, that's what we did there. We're going to see... Uh, how it looks over some gray. I got a couple of gray pieces, but tell you the truth, guys, it has to go over dark color from early testing, just like the uh, GX series from Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color. But I will spray, like, maybe we'll put the green over this green. Maybe we'll do that. We'll put it over um, some colors, see what we get as a result. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to show you the mixing ratio. Get a paper towel. You lay that here. Get your cups. These are the best cups in the world. Let me show you why. All right, number one, get your stirrers. Look at this. Get them by the gross. Gross. This is a thousand, I think. Look at this. I don't even know if this was ten or twelve bucks. I'll put a link below. And you take that thousand, and what you do is, most of your jars are short like that anyway. You get your, not your good nipper. This is my entry level nipper. And I cut them in half. I've turned a thousand into two thousand stirrers, and that's what I do. So uh, I will put the link below. But I also want to put the link for these cups. You guys have to get these cups. Uh, a lot of these cups have these nubs in the bottom. This has no nub. So when you steer, you're not hooking on anything. Let me show you what I mean. Hey, uh, these cups, I, had, I bought a mini case of these, but look at this. Can you see the nub? One, two, three, four. And you end up steering and... All of a sudden, paint's flying everywhere because you're flicking the stick and it's just launching paint. These are actually useless to me unless I use them for measurements when I'm pouring in like my uh, 2K. My 2K clear, I, you know, I need two fives. I've been using it for that and for my resin pours Other than for, for pouring. Don't mix anything in them. These are the cups. I'll put a link below. They're also cheap, and that's what you want, a nice, smooth steering. So... I'm going to do a video of, again, of my favorite items that I use so you guys can uh, stock up on this stuff. It's cheap, 
and it just works. You just want the stuff that works. You want two kinds of stuff. Cheap that works and expensive. It works. If as long as it works, it's worth the money. Hence my oh my 4E's paint mixer. Okay, now these need to be stirred up quite a bit. Now I can do it on this. You know what that looks like in person? It looks like it's like this, but on camera, it <laughs> you can see the how it's shaking. It's pretty funny. It does not look like that in person, but um, ends up these have a lot of chunks on the bottom. So instead of showing you guys the hundred dollar paint mixer, we'll go ahead with our money saving ideas, and uh, let me show you what we're going to stir it up with. Here's the cap the jump winds have. We're going to pull that, and you want to go straight down. Do not lay this this way. The paint ends up running towards the side, ends up on here, and then you get it on the lip. Um, keep a little extra paper towel here. You always want to keep the the lip clean with the lid. Ends up drying paint, and then air gets in. That's how you ruin your paint. Now, we're going to have to go ahead and I'm going to show you. It has to be stirred up. We're going to use this Badger paint stirrer. It's one of my favorite cheap ones. 15 16 bucks, 20 bucks. I don't know what this was. It was worth every penny, though. This paint has a lot of chunks on the bottom. But once I stir it, it seems to stay pretty good. You can see the paint. Look at that. Don't pull up too high. You're going to make a mess in your bench. It doesn't make any foam or anything. It works really well. Okay, here's what you want to do when you want to uh, clean it off. Get as close to the top as you can. Just give it quick spins. And you get most of it off. Get a shot glass with acetone. And then turn it back on. Spotless. Check it out. Check it out. Right back on the bench. She's ready to go. All right. I'm going to do that with all four off camera. Let me put that out of the side. That's it. We're ready to go. Here's how much we're going to put. We're not going to need a lot. We're going to just spray a few spoons here. So, here we go. Oop, that's a bad... A bad coffee stirrer. We want it nice and smooth. There we go. All right. Hold on, guys. Let's tilt the camera for you guys. There we go. All right. Now you can pour in like this. Now you need a rag handy because you need to clean off the lip. Put the stick against the lip and just pour it in. I don't need a lot. Yeah, that's good right there. Actually, that's, that's all we need. So you want to take another fresh paper towel. Make sure the ends are all clean. There's nothing on it. There you go. Then you're going to put this right back on. In case you spill it. All right. I'm going to get these all prepped, but I'm going to show you one now. And uh, this is a lacquer, so we're going to go 50-50 minimum. All right. Let me back up a little bit. I'm going to go 50-50 minimum. They have their own uh, metallic thinner. I'm guessing it's like the rapid thinner. It dries quickly. This is their regular thinner. And this is their leveling. If you want to brush it on, I'll show you guys brushing it on. Uh, one second. We'll prep this, and then we'll brush a spoon so you guys can see it brushed on. And uh, All right. So you can have any of them, or I have a case of this, so I keep using it. I literally have a case of this Mr. Leveling Thinner. I love this stuff. It works in all lacquers and enamels in uh, Tamiya acrylics. All right, so here we go. Fill up the syringe. And one shot should do it. I'm going to show you the consistency. Minimum 50-50, probably 40-60. 40 paint, 60 thinner. And there it is. Now you want to just scrape everything off the bottom and then just give it the... You can also hold it onto the desk and swirl it. And that's it. Now there's the consistency we're looking for. You can see that the pearl of the yellow is sinking to the bottom, which is good because it sinks to the bottom in the airbrush. Actually, what happens. And when you brush it on, it sinks in. And what you want to do is you want to drag it up the cup. You're not going to see the yellow. It's too fine. And see, it leaves a trail behind, but it's really thin. That's what you want. It can look just like that. The old skim milk. It's going to look like skim milk. It's basically like water, to tell you the truth. Yeah. 
And that's it. You're ready to go. This will go over anything perfectly. Preferably over a dark surface. And uh, that's it. Right? So what we're going to do is I am going to brush on. I got one drying, so I'm going to go ahead and brush on this turquoise. So let me show you this before we get to spraying. All right, let me see if I can show you the chunks at the bottom. There you go. See it? See how it settles at the bottom? And you can really, I guess you can stir up for quite a bit. Uh, not going to bother. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stir that one up too. Bonus stir video. I used this yesterday, so it should be pretty well mixed. Turn it off. Now, I control it with your fingers here. Turn it on. There you go. Get most of it off. Back in here. Back in the whirlpool. I got tilted, so it hits, gets up most of the, the steel shaft there. All right. That's it. Wipe it off. We're good. All right, guys. Here we go. We're going to brush some on, then I'll show you the results at the end of the video. All right. We don't need a lot, but what we're going to do is I'm going to put some leveling thinner. I mean, uh, leveler. I don't even know if this is a thinner. I think it is. It just says leveler on it. Leveling. Oh, yeah. Color thinner. There it is. So it's in a smaller bottle because you don't want to use a lot because it's for, it's for brushing, not for airbrushing. It's my guess anyway. All right. Load up the brush. Load up with some leveler. All right, the brush should be loaded up with some leveling. Check this out. See that? Now it's going to need a couple of coats versus airbrushing, which would probably go on in one or two light coats. But the problem with this is you're going to get brush marks. Not bad once it dries. You'll see in the end when I show it to you. The leveling helps out with the brush strokes. But check that out. Now if you're going to paint little pieces, maybe the fingers or something, um, you won't notice it. You're going to get some pretty good results. Beautiful, huh? That's a sneak peek of the turquoise, which is coming up. Actually, we can just go ahead and use this acetone for this. Use the old Barbatos trick. My dad taught me this years ago. You put the brush in a tooth in a clothespin. It keeps it hanging straight. It doesn't bend the bristles, so it's hanging straight up and down. And I let it sit the whole time I'm working. Then once I'm ready to clean up the bench, it's all cleaned up and ready to go. And uh, there you go. That's it. Brushed on. Let me put the cap on this, number seven. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up the rest of these colors, these three other ones besides number two. I'll see you at the booth, and we'll show you how this stuff goes on. Very good-looking colors. You'll be impressed. All right, guys, here we are at the booth, my Pace spray booth. Uh, we're going to start with number two, pearl yellow. Right. I don't know if the camera's been focusing on stuff in the distance, so let's keep this out. There we go. All right, let's see what we go. All right, we're going to start with the basic black spoon, black plastic. Here we go. Just drying it off here. Are getting any dust off? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's a... Right. Look, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you can see it's almost like uh, color shifting guys like you can see the black but in person it's all gold when you flip it wow that looks great I'm gonna lower the air pressure a little bit there we go all right let's see how it looks over something like this Well, this airbrush really does uh, like this paint. That's it. Beautiful. All right, let's uh, 
try it over a gumpla piece. Alright. It looks like uh, it would look good on a kit. It's a little bit of metal flake in it, not like a true metal. Like an all-clad type of gold, you know. But not bad. I, I, it's pretty nice looking. Um, I'm going to show you over colors how it doesn't look that great. Hold on. I'll pick something dark. This is Tamiya Blue, Pearl Blue Spray Can TS89. So I, I don't think we're going to see anything here, but let's try it. It's got to be purple, right? Because it's going to... Oh, it is. It's turning purple. It is. check this out. Well, we're not going to see it unless I... It looks like it's a color shift. Is it? Pretty subtle, but really you can see the purple heavily here in person. Maybe at the bench the lighting will be different. Wow, this, this airbrush really sprays it good. Look at that. Wow, that's great. Alright, let me clean this out. We'll get on to the next color. Alright guys, next up, number three. Pearl Blue. Well, if that's any uh, thing to go by, this should look great. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, this one's awesome. <laughs> it's, is that fantastic? Oh, man, this is the best looking one. And I've tested a bunch of these behind the scenes, but boy, I got to tell you, this, the green, uh, there's a few colors that are just great. Oh, my goodness, that looks great. Um... All right, let's try it over a Gumpla piece. Let's try it over this big one. Look at that. You know what? We should do half and half, right? I'm trying to get this so you guys can see it going on. Did I do the back? I did. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Wow. I'm in awe. I'm, I'm staring at it, guys. Anyway, uh, I might do the other side. We'll do like, maybe we'll do in the green on the other side. We'll see how that is. We'll do that. I'll leave that half and half. Now, um, I'm going to show you what I mean by over the grays and stuff. You don't see it as much. It ends up being more of a, a pearl coating, which is cool. It ends up looking like a, a color shift type of thing. But watch. You're not going to be able to see it right away you know you'll see it at the bench you can see it's got a purplish blue hue to it it's it really has to go over a dark color it really does um, let me try uh, let's see see I got this basket of Tamiya spray metallics and uh, I like to try these over different colors see I don't think this is too light so I think you end up seeing nothing see it? So it's got to be a dark color. All right, let's try it over this. What is this? 94. I don't know what that is. It's a gunmetal or something, right? Let's see. All right, now there we go. See it? And it's bringing out the purple in it. And they end up kind of like a color shift, but the color below has to be on the darker scale. You know? But look what it did. Oh, man, really nice. That's a beautiful color. All right, guys, let me clean this out. Get on to the other two. All right, guys, here we go. Number four, pearl green. Oops, looks like we hit this camera. All right, let's see how this looks. First, of course, over black. If the last one's any indication this should be good looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic yeah these darker colors in the lineup are really special all right here we go we're gonna put this over the second half of this gumpla piece look at that blue I think I got the back yep let's see if we can get the back here 
you see a lot of the red, which is what the original kit was. All right, there we go. That looks good. All right, see, now we can compare all. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Uh, man, it goes on really good. All right. Uh, well, you know what? I don't think we're going to see anything over this, but let's try it. I got a few of these already uh, primed, so... Oh, you can see the green more than the blue, actually. See it? Let's put that up to dry. Um, I don't know. Let's try it over something here. What is this? To my uh, TS-65. This is like a black charcoal or a metallic black, I think. Oh, yeah, it looks a little, a little lighter than the other one, the solid black. Still cool. Side by side on camera, not as much. Let's try it over this uh, metallic green Tamiya. I don't think, Tamiya, I don't think uh, we're going to see much here. No, I didn't, I didn't think so. Yeah, it's going to go over something really dark. Yeah, too bad. But, hey, when it looks like that over dark, why bother anything else? Look at that. All right, guys, let me clean out the brush. Last color coming up. All right, guys, last one is, on camera anyway, magenta, number six. Uh, just in case you guys are wondering, this is what I'm using for my spoons. These, uh, these are really good. They're already shiny. I don't have to bother uh, priming. It saves me uh, time, money on paint. And uh, I'll put a link below for those, too, if you guys are interested in your black spoon samples, they come in handy, I'll tell you right now. All right, here we go. This should be really good looking, I hope. Oh, yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the early colors in the line, the one through four, one through six, are just beautiful. Look at that. Oh, man, that does photograph well. All right, let's try it over a Gumpla piece. Let's see what I got here. I'm reaching for it, guys. Here we go, look at this foot or something here. Let's see what they got here. Get some of the dust off. This stuff practically sprays itself. Like all good lacquers and enamels do, they're easy to go on. Look at that. That would be great, a whole kit like that. All right, let me put that aside. Now, I don't know what else to spray it over. Uh... What do we spray it over, guys? What should we try this on? It's, it's a purple. Um, I don't know if it'll go over blue, but it does have to be dark, obviously. So let's see what this looks like. What is this? Mica Blue from Tamiya. Uh, not doing much. I don't even, I'm not even getting... Well, I'm getting a little bit of a color shift effect. Yeah, it's got to be really dark to be affected. All right, let's try this. TS-94. This is a... It's a gray metallic, I think. Oh, yeah. Getting more of a candy effect. Yeah, you're going to see the purple through it. Look at that. And that's what I mean by the... It looks like it's gray hair in person, but when you tip it, it becomes, it becomes the purple. So it does... It's its own color shift. It makes its own color shift. But you got to experiment, guys. you got to experiment on the colors that it's going to look good doing that. You know I mean? I'm dancing through here. Watch this. This brighter color is probably not going to work as good. Same idea, but not as dramatic. Yeah, a little bit purple. Not bad. Look better over the darker. See it? Uh, anyway, guys, we'll go over these under the lighting at the bench, and I'll show you all the colors I sprayed off camera, and I'll give you a little insider info on uh, the other colors that I've done. See you back at the bench. All right, guys, here we are at the bench. Let's go over them. They're not all here. Um, I fit what I can, and I'll get the rest. A uh, little side note. If you join my Patreon, I posted all the colors you didn't see me spray here. Um, what I did was I set up the camera and shot, and I even showed spraying the, the Tamiya black on the bases and uh, the prep, and I went through a few other things uh, behind the scenes. And uh, what I did was I... Uh, I showed all the other colors going on. So if you want to see every color being sprayed, join my Patreon. It's only four bucks uh, a month. One tear across the board for everybody. 
I'll put up behind the scenes stuff and then uh, my main thing is I will take requests directly from you guys uh, if you want me to test a particular color of paint over another particular like if you want to see what this looks like sprayed over uh, brown uh, I'll spray brown and I'll take this and I'll put it and I'll put it up the video quick and I'll answer your question that's primarily what I set up the patreon for I'm trying to be a little different and I figured taking uh, video requests is a good way to go anyway let's go number one pearl red Look at that. Not as shiny, but a nice, even, nice red. I sprayed it over this black plastic knife. You can see right there. It's good looking. And here it is over a Gumpla piece. I think this was just a green. Yep. It shot well over that. A little different from the main color, obviously. But still not bad. It has a nice look to it. Even going over green. But it's got to be really dark. Dark gray, dark green, a brown. Very dark blue is what you're going to have to have to get the result you're looking for. All right, glaze number two, pearl yellow. Here we go. Very good looking. Almost a gold. A little, a little bit of metal flake in there that I'm not crazy about, but yet when you put it on smaller pieces like this, this is on one of those, that burning flame, whatever it is, Gundam kit, and uh, I sprayed black over it. That's the original red. And look at it, though. It doesn't look great on that. I mean, it looks really good on this for some reason. It just looks good on a smaller piece. Here it is over uh, from the same kit, I think. Not bad. That's a, that's a pretty nice yellow, actually. All right, number three, pearl blue. Oh, this is the one I really like. Look at this. I mean, that is just beautiful. It's, it's just beautiful. All right, here it is over the Gumpla piece. We're going to go over both because I did both colors, obviously. Look at that. Oh, man, it is just great. The green is, too. We're going to go over the both of them. All right, this is sprayed over to my TS-94. It's a dark metallic gray. This is over this lighter blue, but we got nothing. It just it has to have a darkness to it. Now, this is um, gray primer. I call it primer, but I used... Uh, is it in the picture here? Yes, here it is. $3.99 at uh, Hobby Lobby. I even think it was on sale. But it's a matte gray, and it's good for a, a primer if I'm not going to be sanding it or anything. I just want a nice dark gray base, and it works. It holds a lot of these paints. But look at that. Can you see the blue in the reflection? Right here is how it looks in person. You just see it's gray to wherever the light reflects, just like a, a color shift. It's like making your own color shift. Look at that. I think that's pretty cool. Look at that, though. That is a great color. Hey, you're getting like two different things in one jar. You're getting a color shift over the gray, or you're getting this plated-looking blue. All right, let's go on number four, pearl green. A beauty also. I call this that Dynamess green. I'm watching Double Zero again right now. It's one of my favorite Gundam series, Double O. Lock on. Great character. The Dynamess great suit, and that's that Dynamess green. This is over. Uh, what is this? Tamiya 65. Is this dark gray? Is this gunmetal? But it's really, it's so close to black that it's just a lighter shade. See it? It did nothing over the green, metallic green at all. Let's see if we get the color shift look here. Oh, yeah, we got it. We got the same thing. See it? So they do like this dark gray. If you're going to get this kind of effect, that's the way to go. And here it is, the wings, the other side. Of the blue, flip it over. Check that out. Fantastic. All right, pearl magenta. Another gorgeous color. Look at that. What is this? Oh, it's the Gumpla piece. Look at that. I went on the piece really nice. The stuff just sprays itself. It just lays down beautifully. What was this over the mica blue? Now this, it's really hot. Even in person, there's a little bit of a purple shading, but nah, not much. Not really worth it. And this was over the uh, TS-94. This is a light gun gray. That looks pretty good. Let's compare it. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera there. Oh yeah, that looks great. If you, do, if you paint some of your kit gray... And in black, you can get a two-tone, nice-looking kit. You know what I mean? You go like this. 
That's number six. Move that out of the way. Here we go, number seven. All right. Pearl turquoise. This is the, Here's where I started spraying them off camera. Except I showed you guys I brushed it on. All right, you ready for this? This is brushed on without leveling the leveling thinner. And this is the one I did in front of you guys with the leveling thinner. Look at the difference. Completely different tone, but you're not getting the brush strokes at all. At all, almost at all. That's brushed on, airbrushed on. That's as close as you get to uh, brushing it, I guess, with the leveling thinner, to airbrushing it. This is over the, the Gundam foot. I'm trying to get it in the light here. Here it is. This was over dark mica blue. Look at that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you still see the blue. And then I sprayed it over this. Again, ready? See it? You get that shimmer, that green shimmer. Then I sprayed it directly over this dark blue piece, and check this out. See the green? So you can get all different results based on the base it goes over. All right, this is eight. This is pearl white. I tried this over a lot of stuff because I figured it was a neutral, you know, a white, how it would look over everything. And there it is. It's a, it's a really cool looking color over black. This is over, what was this? Vivid purple. Look at that. It almost came out the same. A little duller. This is over gray. Did nothing but dull that right out. Still, it kind of looks like a nice dull steel look. This is over a uh, red, a bright red spoon. Give it a pearl look. This is over uh, just straight red. A darker red. Same thing, it just gives it a pearlescence look. This is over the blue directly. Gives it that special coating look. Is that what it is? This was over the Gumpla piece. Painted black with the Tamiya. That's pretty nice. That Destiny, is that the Destiny Wings? Is that what that is? I forgot where I'm getting these kits from. This is straight over blue. That looks pretty nice, huh? I put it on heavier than I put it on this piece, I guess. And this is over green. See, it gives it like a sheen. Pretty cool. That's pearl white. All right, there's only a handful left. Let me go grab them. Let me pause the camera. All right, guys, let's wrap this up and go with the rest. Number nine, pearl black. Uh... This went over black, obviously, but I got nothing. It's almost not worth holding these up. I sprayed it over the dark red so we can kind of see what it did. And hold on. I say dark red. This is the red that I painted that BMW. And that's what we got. Just dirtied it up a bit. Tinted it, I guess you could say. This is over uh, pearl green. So i couldn't get good results with the pearl black at all here it is over gray this is the best look i could get it kind of makes it look like a steel which is pretty cool actually but that was kind of a one i didn't like all right this is pearl silver number 10. now this has a great look i do like this look at that a little metallic to it but this will make a great base for a candy but now let me show you when i told you the other one looks good over the smaller pieces how nice is that over this piece look at it It just looks awesome on this piece. So I think in small doses, this silver is a good one. That's over a blue, Oxford blue from AK, AK Interactive. This is their uh, blue uh, acrylic paint. This is a light blue, yep, AK. And it uh, really didn't do much. It just added a pearl look to them like the other ones did. But this, this one actually turned it completely different. But this is where it shines. It shines over the, the Gumpla pieces. That's for sure. That's 10. Silver. This is Pearl Moon White. All right. See it? Now, this is over uh, TS-40. Was this a black? This was a, a dark metallic black, I think. And I sprayed it over this red, bright mica red from um, Tamiya, the spray can. And it just, it just added a pearl look like the others have been doing. Now, let me show you this versus the other white. Hold on one second. Here is their pearl white. 
and this is the moon white. It just adds like a dark tint to it. See it? So depending on which one you need. Now you don't need to buy all these. I don't. I would skip the pearl black, and then we got another black coming up. But we're gonna see the difference. But see the whites? They, those are. I mean, they come out kind of different. Yeah, the moon one has this bluish, this midnight blue. I would call it blue gram. See it? But that's the original white. That's this midnight, midnight blue, uh, moon night, moon white, moon night. I got the uh, comic book on my brain. You guys watch that series? Pretty good. Um, all right, this is it. Number twelve, midnight black. Again with the midnight black, but this one actually adds something. Whereas this pearl black did nothing. Can you see it? It has the pearls in it, so you can kind of see you're getting something here. But personally, not much. Here I sprayed it over gold, and it just made it dirty looking. And here I sprayed it over that gray, which we did get a cool look. Check this out. It's kind of like stamped metal or something. So it did look good over the dark gray, but it's a little, it's like a dash of silver added to black. I'm not crazy about the blacks at all. The silver I did like in this range, but the colors are great. The, the, the reds, the blue, the green, those are the, they're really nice. But these are great, great colors. They're unique. They're different. You get a lot of uses out of them. Um, I'll put a link below where you can get them. I think Gundam Pros has them. Robot Kai has them. So I'll put those links up for them. And uh, that's it. You guys can go ahead, pick the colors you like from what you've seen. Use leveling thinner if you have it already. If you don't, grab one of theirs. If you're going to brush it, use this leveling thinner. It really made the difference, obviously. And uh, let me show you quickly what is coming up. This came in today. Check this out, guys. Hold on. I'm trying to get the camera just right. Look at this. Um, this is under 70 bucks, I think. I, I want to try this for the channel really bad. Three needles. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and a 0 0.8. Let's see where the 0 0.8 is. 0 0.8, and they give you the nozzle and the needles. That's what these are. And the caps. It's a trigger type. It's, oops, sorry guys. It's got a Mac valve. Three cup sizes. Came with a hose. Um, I'm hoping this is good because... It's a really good value, particularly with these needles. And a point .8, I've been trying to get a thick, fat needle so I can paint some of my car paints, and I'm going to be testing this diamond finish uh, as soon as I get the thinner. Um, to spray this in an airbrush, you got to thin it down a little bit, but it should be a certain type of thinner. Is it a xylene? I think it's a xylene. I ordered their thinner, so that's coming in. But I think out of the can, I could probably use that airbrush with a point .8. That'd be awesome. So that's coming up very soon in my test along with the clear colors, which is also coming up. Anyway, guys, that is all. Be on the lookout for the refilling of my neon panel liners. Very proud of those. And um, the person who called me today in uh, my home state, we spoke on the phone. I don't know if you want your name given out. Give me a, uh, Drop me an email. I want to go over some stuff with you. I'm going to be experimenting with something that you asked about. It involves the neon, the neon blue. And um, that's it. So uh, I want to thank you guys again. We're over 50,000, 51,000 now subs. We're doing great. I'll announce the giveaway uh, from the last video very soon. Unfortunately, I've been scammed again, and I didn't even mention giveaway in the title or anything. They're just spamming me now. I guess I've, I've become popular enough that I'm getting scammers, which sucks for you guys. I really do apologize. I spent two hours erasing and reporting that scammer comment, and two hours I could have used towards production went towards that, and I'm disgusted. Um, anyway, guys, consider joining the Patreon. Like I said, it's only 4 bucks a month. It helps the channel. It helps provide more uh, material that I need. And for that, I'm going to go some behind-the-scenes stuff. I showed all these other colors being sprayed on and a couple other things from behind the scene, stuff at the booth. And, um, and I will take your requests. And don't forget, if you're going to brush on the eyes, to go ahead and see if I can get one last shot in. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Look at that. I'm using my uh, blue light right on them. So, if you're going to brush it on, don't forget, go with my uh, my enamel neons. All right? My Mecha Empire. Those are also at Gundam Pros. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Have a great holiday weekend, a wonderful Labor Day weekend. I'll see you in a few days. We're probably going to be testing that airbrush. And next, we're going to be doing the clear test. And uh, I want to say thank you guys once again. We'll see you in the next video.